Maybe Daniel, we can start with Megan's question in the chat, which okay. asks, you know, most of these are hard science presentations. Is there a place for other disciplines in these competitions? I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a place for every every possible discipline you can think of, right? All you need to do is is have some research that you're working on, right? This is the point of these competitions. It's to make your research relatable. Um, and so the examples that we've shown uh, are, we've only shown them because these are the examples that we've worked with directly, right? I, I'm an, in electrical engineering. And so <laughs> I've worked a lot with the uh, electrical engineering conferences and, and the examples that we've shown are these sort of highly technical um, mathematical examples. Um, but that's not the limited view. Don't um, don't think just because what I've shown you here today uh, is the general um, the the general style or general research focus of these presentations. The only reasons we've shown you them is because that those are the ones that we've sort of worked with directly and, and experienced. Um, if you take a look at McMaster's three minute thesis competition, um, I, it didn't run this year, I believe, but in the previous years, you can watch through some of those videos um, and they'll give you an idea of all the different areas of research that were covered. Uh, I think one of the, some of the interesting ones that stand out, um, there was a talk on um, acting and, and uh, improving acting from a sort of research perspective. And I thought that talk was really interesting. I believe it won in 2018 at McMaster, something like that. Um, and so that, you know, that is related to, that's not related to engineering by any means, um, but it was a very interesting and captivating presentation where the presenter was able to get his research uh, topic across. So hopefully that, um, that answers your question. I don't know if Michelle and Rachel have any other comments. I certainly think that all disciplines are welcome. And I think I, I was reflecting on one of my good friends, she studies, she's in uh, English and cultural studies and studies fantasy novels and mm. in education. And I was just thinking about how cool that would be to hear about her communicating mm -hmm. why this is valuable, why these novels tie together and what we can take from those uh, general themes that she's pulling and apply to day to day. And so I though certainly there are a lot of science and engineering examples. If you come from other disciplines, welcomed, encouraged, and I'm stoked to hear. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm really excited to hear talks. You know, I, I spent a lot of time listening to engineering talks, um, but I, I'd like to hear more from, you know, the rest of the university. And so I think the three minute thesis before was like one of the greatest ways that I could learn about other science that people are doing here. Um, and now, you know, Gradflix is, is another opportunity. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys create. And um, yeah, yeah, no, any research topic is of course an acceptable focus. Um, I see another question here. Any tips on job interviews? Um, that is a really interesting one. Job interviews are, are definitely tricky. Um, I think there's a couple things. Uh, for me personally, I like to um, do a little bit of studying before I go into a job interview. Um, I look up the, I make sure I've at least looked at the, the company webpage to make sure I have a basic understanding of what they do. I know sometimes when you're submitting a lot of applications, um, you can forget a little bit what, <laughs> what the company does. Um, and so I, I personally will read through that. And I'll also do a little bit of review of my own work, some of the things that I've created. Um, for me, um, I have a lot of uh, extracurricular work. I, I work on the McMaster Nudo satellite team. And so sometimes I'll think about and, and focus on certain areas that I've developed recently. And I'll try to organically bring them up during um, the interview process. Uh, it helps when you have also um, sort of practice some of the typical interview questions that they ask, uh, you know, right? What are your, some of your, you know, greatest weaknesses, uh, greatest strengths and things along these lines, because when you have them practiced, um, you know, it's easier to not stumble over a, a sort of weird or awkward answer. Um, so definitely look up common interview questions and have them rehearsed a little bit. Uh, Rachel, Michelle, any other thoughts you'd like to add here? I was going to add a point about first impressions because it's very similar to like the 3MT that you got a very 
short amount of time to make a good first impression. And something that John had me do when I was um, earlier in my grad school career was to actually watch a lot of these 3MTs, or you can look at interviews on YouTube. I'm sure there are examples of really good and bad interviews. And he had me judge the person, um, just a rating. It, It can be about whatever criteria that you choose, judge them or rate them out of 10 in the first 20 fit 10 to 15 seconds of of them being present and then see how if your rating changes if or if it changes at all and note why it might have changed or why it might not have so um dan had alluded to he, him even walking onto stage that's like one thing that you're already starting to judge that person ahead of time i know i'm talking a lot about being judged but i think it gets you right into the mindset of how you can present yourself as best as you can whether or not it's in person or virtually on screen but it's a good exercise i think just using freely available tools like all the 3mts or um job interviews you see uh on youtube I think podcasts are a really good way because a lot of them are filmed and you can actually see the way people present themselves on video. I hope that helps. I guess the last thing that I'll share on job interviews is perspective. In today's day and age, certainly it can feel very challenging and competitive to find a job and enter interviews. And I was recently in a pretty competitive interview and a really great piece of advice that I think really stuck with me and I would like to share is this idea that While certainly they are interviewing to see how you fit with the team, you also bring value to the table. It is a conversation about your excellence and not necessarily this interrogation of where your fault and cracks are. And so remembering the value that you bring to the table and approaching it as as scary as it can be, a conversation in some ways has certainly helped me in the past for uh, challenging interviews. Right. Uh, one one thing I'll also chime in here as well is um, at least on a sort of technical side when it comes to you know engineering related things, um, don't avoid lying when you don't know the correct answer, right? Um, if you don't know the correct answer, think about exactly how you would solve the problem. Um, you know, oftentimes these technical questions will come up where you'll be asked, you know, something that you you just don't know or you can't remember, and it's perfectly fine to acknowledge that you don't know right? It's perfectly fine to acknowledge that you don't know and to say that you would try and figure it out um, and show your problem solving to try and solve that problem, right? Um, I've, I've been interviewed and have been the interviewer on multiple occasions. And I think one of the most um, distracting things is when I can see an individual is just lying to try and prove that they know what they're saying, right? Or just wildly guessing uh, on the rec- correct answer. And it think, I think it takes much more confidence to acknowledge, yes, I, I don't know that particular thing, right? But I am aware I don't know it and I know how to solve it. So just something else to keep in mind as you uh, perform and, and work on your interviews. Any other questions? Um, uh, maybe we still have uh, Aline and Mahmoud here. Um, if you'd like to ask them any questions as well. And yeah, if you'd like to unmute and and talk with us as well, please feel free. I'm gonna leave John's email in the chat so that if anybody wants to get in touch with him, they can copy and paste that. Just give me a second. Perfect. Okay, did we uh, cover all the questions from the chat previously? Were there any unanswered questions here? I think so. Rachel was doing an excellent job of keeping up with the chat questions and providing some really thoughtful insight. Perfect. Um, there's a question in the chat about when is the next 3MT? I am unsure because Canceled of COVID. This Canceled this year, um, back maybe next year? We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think. I mean, most likely it'll run next year, unless another catastrophic thing occurs. I really hope it doesn't. Knock on um, wood. Knock on wood. Um, but yeah, most likely next year. I believe it runs around uh, February to March time. So around this time where people are preparing for gla- uh, GradFlix, 3MT will also be happening. Yeah. 
So if you're interested in that, I mean, a lot of the skills you see, there's a lot of parallels here. So if you participate in one of these competitions, you can very easily transfer your knowledge over to the other one. I actually have one more question. Um, yep, no problem. And uh, thanks again for the great presentation. You guys, all of you have given such helpful advice and tips. Um, so thanks a lot. Of course. Um, my question is basically just, can do you, any of you apply these same skills or the same like structure to um, less formal presentations? So um, like in the context of giving a presentation in your lab or um, maybe something more informal, but still in an academic context, um, like kind of what's the, what's your balance with that? Um, I, I mean, I absolutely do myself. Um, uh, I like to keep my slides simple as much as possible. I think when it comes down to it, uh, I would rather have um, people listening to what I'm saying and uh, me directing them to certain portions of the slide for them to read, than to have my slides be a summary of what I'm saying, which I think is what often happens, right? Um, when people create their technical presentations to do an overview of, of their current work, um, they just put everything on there, right? Graphs are on there and, and everything. And that could be a good reference if you're sort of looking through it in the future and trying to you know, understand more deeply what's happening with the material you're looking at. But if you want to give a, you know, a concise, clear presentation, simplicity is still always best. Try to keep your, your bullet points you know, short and concise. Don't have sentences in your, in your presentation, right? Everything should be very short phrases that you can go into more detail uh, verbally. Uh, Rachel, Michelle, any other thoughts? Um, yeah, I was very shocked. I think I, my internet's a little bit slow, so I don't know if you can hear, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I was really shocked at how applicable these skills were to literally everything that I presented. And it also shocks me how bad I'm still at presenting things. Anyway, I also now teach fitness classes for the pulse. And I realized that how learning about how to present for specialist and non-specialist audiences actually makes me think really hard about my, my audience in general. And so then when I go to a different audience, I still have that in mind and it takes a while to really think about it. Um, but a lot of these exercises that John has taken us through, for example, going through a lot of these three MTs starts to prepare you for, um, almost any situation like your job interview or presenting to your lab, which is actually a more specialized audience because you can cater it to them a little bit better, or your material a little bit better to them because they know the material. And um, it is really so transferable across every domain that I've, I've encountered. And I've been so shocked at how helpful it is to think about this, like your storytelling or your being authentic and, um, yeah, even how I dress, I, I, when I went to my, when I first was preparing to go to my 3MT, how I dressed was not the way I ended up dressing because John Bandler told me that the way you're dressing is going to come off so bad. And so now I start to think about that a little bit better. <laughs> I hope that helps, Megan. I don't know if we answered your question well enough. Yeah, no, that was, that was great. Thank you. I'm curious, what were you, what were you wearing before the presentation? <laughs> That was so bad. <laughs> so um, it was a, I think it was equivalent to like a polo shirt. It wasn't a polo shirt, but it was like a, um, a loose fitted shirt with a collar and um, loose fitted is not a good description of it. I don't really have a good way to describe this shirt, but it was a little bit more casual than how I dressed. And when I went up onto the stage, I had a blazer on. Um, I wore pretty much like business wear instead of a more casual look. So just a bit more professional. Yes. So it would, I guess it would be equivalent to Dan wearing a, a tie and a shirt versus a polo shirt. I think mm -hmm. what I had on before was more in line with that casual looking, looking fine, but like it's a little bit more casual and something that we didn't um, go into too deeply today, but John always talks about it is when you dress, dressing to impress sort of that idea that like when you dress for you, these presentations, you're showing your audience that you do care about them and, and their opinion matters to you.
So it's a, a little bit of a humbling thing that you know that your audience is there and you care what they think. Um, and it's a bit of a respect sort of thing that that's something that John has always said. That's a really interesting way of framing it. I never thought about it that way before. Thank you. You're welcome, Megan. Okay, uh, last call for any questions. I went over time, unfortunately, um, but we still have a little bit more time if, if people have any more questions. I'm leaving this presentation today, Daniel, holding you accountable to some, did you say? Now I can't even remember. Kung oh fu? my gosh, working memory is zero. Wasn't it Kung Fu or something? I couldn't already? remember if it was Kung Fu or Karate, but either way, I'm holding you accountable to <laughs> one of them or both. Good to know. <laughs> you in yeah. a year. Kick down the snow, get ready to punch. Okay. <laughs> Too far. Okay. I'm okay. Like you guys just went off the rails. By the yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> cancel, yeah, that's cancel. okay. <laughs> well, you know what, then I'll, I'll close this off now. Thank you all for participating. Um, again, you can reach out to, to John at Bandler at McMaster.ca and he'll be happy to answer um, any more specific details on the presentation you're trying to create. And with that, I wish you all a good day and good luck on your competition. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Michelle. Bye, Dan. Bye. Bye. Thank everyone. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Mahmoud. Really appreciate Thanks. you being here.